Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Animaction, and welcome to part 3 of my year-by-year -year retrospective, The Animated 80s. I hope you've all been enjoying the series because I've been having a blast making them and learning more than I could have ever possibly imagined about 80s animation. But enough of that, let's get down to what we're all here for. Okay, so one other thing before we move into this new year. As much as I hate to admit it, I'm not really perfect. That being the case, I made a couple errors or omissions in 1981 that I want to address here. Firstly, I left off a Looney Tunes spinoff from the year, The Daffy Speedy Show. It ran on NBC against CBS's Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner show. It also changed slightly here in 1982, but I'll chat about that in a few minutes. So a quick recap of my thoughts and conclusions from 1981. In that year, I praised the appearance of two female-led shows on the schedule, and more prominence of the standalone 30-minute series. I also lamented that it was kind of a dry year for new ideas and shows that pushed animation or storytelling ahead. Will 1982 fix those problems while building on the good? It's time we visit 1982. Like I did with the last video, I want to take a quick look here at what shows lasted into the new year. First, we have the true old guard with shows from 1980 that are still in the air in 1982. This group includes Flash Gordon, Super Friends, Hanna-Barbera's World of Super Adventure, the all-new Popeye show, the Bugs Roadrunner show, and Fat Albert. That's right around a 25% survival rate from 1980, which isn't bad at all. Joining that list from 1981 are the Smurfs, both Spider-Man and Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, the Kid Super Power Hour, and Laverne and Shirley in the Army and the Daffy Speedy Show, though the last two changed formats somewhat. That means that just under 50% of the new 1981 lineup made it into 82. So what didn't make it? This list is kind of a sad one, because it includes my two personal favorite shows from 1981. Goldie Gold and Action Jack, The Quickie Koala Show, Trollkins, The Tarzan Lone Ranger Zorro Adventure Hour, and worst of all, both Black Star and Space Stars all met their ends in 1981. Heathcliff and Marmaduke also came to an end, but we'll be seeing Heathcliff again soon, so stay tuned. The others, though, were gone for good, with none of them getting any future love. It's a shame, because even though the stories for Black Star and the Teen Force were pretty era standard, they were some cool characters and settings. So what did those shows get replaced with in the new year? Honestly, not much. 1982 brought us just 10 new shows, and for some of them I'm using the word new very generously. This year we got Meatballs and Spaghetti, Shirt Tales, Pandemonium, The Gary Coleman Show, Gilligan's Planet, An Incredible Hulk Cartoon, and a few multi-bills or variety shows like The Pac-Man, Little Rascals, Richie Rich Show, The Mork and Mindy, Laverne and Shirley, Fawn Show, The Scooby and Scrappy-Doo Puppy Hour, and The Flintstone Funnies. Out of all of them, none were really new and unique from an idea perspective. We had a couple shows based on live-action programs or people, a few legacy character shows, either cartoon or comic book, and just three fresh ideas. Shirt Tales was about animal crime fighters and in many ways reminiscent of several earlier Hanna-Barbera shows like Hong Kong Fooey or Quick Draw McGraw, combined with the team aspect of Scooby-Doo and the slice-of-life aspect of the Smurfs. Pandemonium was about an evil wizard chasing a MacGuffin and a pair of kids with a trio of pandas racing to stop him. The pandas could combine into a single super panda though, which was interesting, but the concept wasn't unlike any of the other race for the item with our superpowered friend shows of the past. Lastly, 1982 brought Meatballs and Spaghetti, which followed the adventures of a singing group as they drove across the country. Think Josie and the Pussycats, but with more hijinks and less mystery solving. Gilligan's Planet took the Gilligan's Island formula and transplanted it, wholly intact, into space. The Mork and Mindy, Laverne and Shirley Fonz Hour did the same thing, taking the Mork and Mindy concept into animation and pairing it with season 2 of Laverne and Shirley and the Army. I still prefer the original live-action versions of each of those shows over the cartoon adaptations, though. Lastly, The Gary Coleman Show tried to cash in on the actor's star power by putting him in the role of an angel, standard high-janky slapstick in its purest form. Similar to the couple of years we've already covered, this year brought back a handful of legacy characters. Unlike 1981's Space Stars, though, these shows followed the Hanna-Barbera's World of Super Adventure formula and just reran older productions. But unlike that show, these weren't reruns from a decade or more earlier. The Flintstone Funnies just repackaged and reran segments from the Flintstone Comedy Show, which had only aired a year before from November 80 to 81. Likewise, the Scooby and Scrappy-Doo Puppy Hour consisted of reruns of Scooby and Scrappy-Doo from November 1980 to November 1981, and combined those with new short segments featuring Scrappy-Doo and Scooby's brother Yabadoo, get it, like Yabadabadoo, and a new series called The Puppy's New Adventures, which was essentially a riff on The Incredible Journey. The Sylvester and Tweety Daffy and Speedy Show was an evolution of 1981's Daffy Speedy Show and reran Looney Tunes skits featuring the title characters, and finally, The Incredible Hulk was a new series, but based on an old character, and telling stories pretty similar to what was running in the comics at the time. Programming and format-wise, 1982 saw some regression back to the shorts and multi-bill structure of years past. Of the ten new series of the year, four of them fit here. 
Scooby and Mork and Mindy were both part of the insert name hour here double features, and the Sylvester Tweedy, Daffy and Speedy show, Flintstone Funnies, and Pac-Man Little Rascals, Richie Rich show all used the same shorts format. Those three were also pretty much continuations, as Sylvester and Tweedy were just added to the title of the already airing Daffy Speedy show, the Flintstones started airing just nine months after its previous incarnation ended with reruns of the same, and Richie Rich got some new partners and picked up the torch from 1980's Richie Rich Scooby-Doo show after a year on hiatus. There was one really significant thing to note this year, as Pac-Man represented the first cartoon adaptation of a video game, and that was pretty awesome. But other than that, I don't really have much else to say about 82. There was movement this year, it just wasn't forward. Much like 1981 before it, 1982 ends up being a strong contender for the bottom of my ranking when I get to it. This year didn't bring us any new female-led shows, it reverted further away from the individual program format, and only gave us new series that ran the same plays as several series from the past, with little to no innovation or evolution in character design or storytelling. Not only that, but the best shows of the previous years were nowhere to be found, with things like Black Star, Thundar, Battle of the Planets, and Space Stars being off the air, and holdouts like Star Blazers being absent in the gap between seasons 2 and 3. Again, I'm not really old enough to remember 1982 firsthand, but having researched the year and what it had to offer, I don't think I missed much. Good news is on the horizon though, because 1983 is coming, and it's bringing a whole load of awesome with it. Well, it wasn't the longest list of new shows this year, but unfortunately you're not going to be finding most of them. As of May 2023, of all the new series I just covered, The Gary Coleman Show, Pandemonium, The Puppy's New Adventures, Meatballs and Spaghetti, Mark and Mindy, and The Little Rascals have all faded away, with no official way, either in print or out, to watch them. The Flintstone Funnies can be found in its original Flintstone Frolics version with a Boomerang subscription, and Richie Rich and The Incredible Hulk are both available for digital purchase on Prime Video. Lastly, Pac-Man, Gilligan's Planet, Shirt Tales, and Laverne and Shirley and the Army are currently available on in-print DVDs. This was a bad year for preservation of these series, and I fear it's only going to get worse. And there you have it, a recap and analysis of 1982, such as it was. Overall, this was probably the weakest year that I've covered so far. I'll give credit to Pac-Man for proving the concept of video games as cartoons and opening that floodgate, but otherwise, this one is just kind of a footnote in animation history. There weren't even any action candidates for this channel. But what do you guys think about this year? Did it impress you more than it did me? If you do agree with me, don't let the year ruin your excitement, because I promise 1983 will rekindle it next week. I hope to see you all there. Thanks for watching, and I hope you're finding this series to be a fun ride. Stay tuned, and stay tuned. As in cartoons. Later.